Now is the hour for toppling tables where fat cat bureaucrats gobble brains that are bloated with cathode ray fables. Now is the hour for cutting the cables and spilling the silver blood, the bad blood of reruns that spun for time without mind, and the sparkle and shine of the spirits trapped under the glasses, the glistening luster of spit, the driveling drool from the idiot grin on the face of the fool. Now is the hour for slicing the feed and tripping the switch and loosing the deluge to which this bitching is only a prelude, a preview to school you. The tube is being desanitized and exercised, so watch the sterile ghosts of Mary Tyler Moore and Alan Alda clean dissolving in the solvent of the static. Squeaky melt away into a field of filth, and what you smell isn't smoke from the circuit board. It's the ordure, the manure, the cess in the sewer, the impure, rising up and splattering your eyes and working its way inward to your brain to say, surprise, 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 Gomer doesn't live here anymore. And doesn't that distress you, America? America, with your thousand eyes turned inside to watch the dreams, a thousand eyes with just one brain between, a thousand eyes to cry and watch me take a crap on the face of liberty and broadcast it on national TV. Welcome to Rocks. I'm Jay, and I'll be your bartender. I'm here in this undisclosed location in western Montana, producing this show, or co-producing it, with B. Hey, not B. I'm at an undisclosed location somewhere here in New Orleans, Louisiana. I'll be your editor for this television program, which means that I control all that you see and hear, which means that I can do this, or this, and I like to Cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it to the edge. Or this. We need to mix a drink to make this easier for you to visualize. This is the Rocky Rumpus that we're mixing here. Now that we've got our uh, vodka appropriately chilled, we want to add just a dab of oyster-flavored sauce. You just want a little yeah. kind of... It looks like uh, something that happened to you after your last really bad night of oh. drinking. Yeah, you want to... <laughs> Tell us, about, is this similar to your last night of drinking? That times a hundred. We have that on videotape. We we'll cut that in right now while this chills. Okay. It's that way. <laughs> Joe, Joe's the asshole recording it off. He's going to play it back when we're all sober. Kettle full of chunks. It looks like it. Is this juvenile? Get busy, what? man. Is this completely uh, immature? Or what? I got I to stick my finger in. This big, giant... Black leaf floating in the toilet. Look, <laughs> Joe! <laughs> you guys must be good friends. He's or something. got something on his head. It looks like a woman's dress. <laughs> but there's a black lettuce type thing floating in the toilet. Oh my god! <laughs> it's black. <laughs> Um, you should, uh, you know, just leave that stuff in there, and we'll be um, checking in with you later. He doesn't eat vegetables. In the meantime... The guy's got scurvy. Okay, so now that you've uh, seen the effects of this drink, we're going to get back to mixing it. This is Tabasco sauce. You want to add just, like, two dashes of it. Spicy. Spicy. Whoa! The last ingredient here is some Henry's Hard Lemonade. Excuse me. It, it doesn't matter. Lemonade. Just hard lemonade. Brand is unimportant. We don't do endorsements Alcohol is. until somebody pays us. You don't want to stir this around because you'll disturb the the little lump in the bottom. The globule. The globule. That's kind of like the, the worm in the bottle of the tequila bottle. It uh, It's your little surprise at the very end when you're done drinking. Oh, that's so, lovely. So, bottoms up to the Rocky Rumpus. <laughs> I would pronounce this, the Rocky Rumpus, as distinctly potable. As a matter of fact, I would go so far as to say that if you don't try this drink, you're a wuss. And you should change back to the soft porn channel because that's the only friends you'll ever have. This is Dave.
That was appalling. We've already met Matt. Here, yeah. But, you know, in all reality, he is just sauntered in here and has his beer in hand, as yeah. does Dave. And we've already met Corey, have we not? Yeah. And uh, this is Scooter Bob, otherwise known as Day. It's not Scooter Bob. <clears throat> What's that? You, can you explain this to us once again? Well, this is a television show. It's, uh, it's called Rocks. It glorifies the responsible use of alcohol by teaching you to mix a variety of drinks um, for the benefit of yourself and your peers and uh, your liver. Uh, Amen, brother. <laughs> so we were talking about your profession. Now, uh, you're, you're a tile setter, correct? I don't know what you're talking about, Joe. <laughs> like, for example, the tile you're seeing probably behind my head. Let's see if... Uh, yep, there it is. Tile. Exactly. So obviously, you have professional skills. You're not just some kind of random dumbass that hangs out with me, unlike most of my friends. Gotcha. Yeah. Speaking of which, yeah, going <laughs> what's going on over here? Uh, I'm just having a beer. Just hanging out with dumbass. Just hanging out over here. Uh, tweedle dumb and tweedle dumber. So uh, welcome to this episode of Rocks. This is the 87th episode entitled The Seven Year Itch. This is uh, actually the first program that we've made of this television program since 1995, which was before the millennium, before I lost my hair, um, before a whole bunch of stuff that we're going to get to later. I guess the first thing that needs to really be explored here is what the hell is a seven year itch? And... Oh. I think we got a discrepancy. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I've experienced it. You haven't experienced a seven year itch? Not to my knowledge. Do you know what one is? No. Oh. Forehead is itch. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> Smell that seven year itch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's accompanied by Forehead. a smell. Right. Exactly. Do you have any idea what a seven-year itch is? Because I don't. I don't. Sorry. Matt, come on in. You're the next contestant on what the fuck is a seven-year itch. <laughs> seven-year itch. Um, God, what is that? Seven-year itch. Have you heard that phrase before? Yes, I have. It has something to do with genitalia, I think. Really? <laughs> Hence... Why don't you give us another demonstration? Yeah, that was excellent. Clearly, we're going to have to consult a higher authority. What do you think, B? I know exactly what you're talking about, Jay. The seven-year itch is this program, Rocks. The seven-year itch is, is like an affliction, a rash, a scar, a scab, like a wound on the face of the earth. For seven years now, we've been trying to ignore it, but it keeps tickling, itching, tickling at the back of your brain. And you've been picking at it, haven't you? Haven't you? Picking at it, scratching, and now finally, after seven long years, seven long, dry years of Scratching, you've finally drawn blood again, haven't you? <sighs> Me too, actually. Feels good, doesn't it? Rocks, scratching till it bleeds. What are you gonna make there, Joe? I'm going to make what's called a seven-year itch, 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 itch. You'll want to have a cocktail shaker. This may look like a really nice item. This was a, a wedding gift to me from Editor B. The only thing that sucks about it is that it makes me feel so inadequate because, of course, never mind. So you'll need a cocktail shaker. You want to put some ice in here. A good little handful will do you. I've got it conveniently arrayed in this uh, tray. So you got plenty of ice inside your uh, cocktail shaker item. The first thing that you want to add is some... Seven. This is a brand endorsement because there's only one seven. But you'll just have to put up with that because seven year itch, that's what the damn drink is called. It's a blend of distinctive character, kind of like this TV show, which uh, means that you should put about an ounce in. And then you're going to add some peppermint schnapps. This brand we have is De Kuiper, but that's not important because there's all sorts of different kinds of peppermint schnapses. If you drink peppermint schnapps, then you'll become a sailor. Y you see the, the anchor there? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. You'll want to put about an ounce of this in there. And then the last ingredient you want to add is some uh, Jägermeister. The important thing is to have Jesus over the head of a uh, uh, deer. It must mean that uh, God is with you when you drink Jägermeister. Pour it all in. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a lot, but if this bottle was full, 
We'd still pour it all in, okay? And then let the cocktail shaker do what it's good at, which is shaking. Make sure the lid's on it, because otherwise you're gonna make a grand mess. And then strain it. Mmm, doesn't that look good? Mm. Doesn't it make you just feel itchy? Good. And then you want a, a twist of freshly ground pepper. And that's what gives you the seven year itch. So I'm gonna give this a little taste. You know, believe it or not, this is actually good and I'm probably gonna drink it all. But it reminds me of all those days, seven, eight, nine, 10, 15 years ago, back when we were doing this TV show, Previously, I used to make all these terrible drinks. I've progressed as a bartender. Let me taste that. You could gargle with this shit. Okay, hang on a second and let me, um... Let me get your first impressions of the seven-year itch. Wow, you know, there's actually a really nice kind of balanced bouquet to this thing. You, you, you get that pepper smell as you... Yeah. As you kind of... Bring it to your lips and... That's savory. Savory! Did you hear that? I'm a professional! I'm still talented! <laughs> is it scratching? Is it scratching that itch for you? Yeah, this is scratching a certain itch for me, but really... You see, I've been writing all these stories for all these magazines. It pays pretty well. And I haven't written about anything that I give a shit about since my days in Bloomington when I was writing for the Newsweekly making no money. Lately, you know, I've been writing all these magazine stories about tech companies, how to make money, how to um, build a CRM system. Yeah, I'm, I've become like one of those people, middle class. The other day, I was moving some files around and I came across all the files that we had generated during all the days of rocks. It's a big volume of material. Let's and I thought I'd show yeah. you that. Yeah. You'll see here in this file, this drawer is completely full. And it's completely full of rock stuff. Here you have, for example, an old issue of Wired magazine. If I recall correctly, oh, looky there, rocks. <laughs> You've probably never seen an episode of the best TV show in America, the best TV show in America, the best TV show in America. So this is an, an article that ironically came out after we produced the last, or the most recent episode of Rocks. Like it says, December 1995. We produced the last episode that we did in May of 1995. And this magazine article in a major magazine said that we, it was the best TV show in America. But we had stopped. And, um, and uh, that's kind of sad. The best TV show in America. We're mixing a drink. This is a vodka cranberry. I'm making this for my lovely and effervescent wife, and it's a lovely and effervescent drink that you can make if, you know, like, you're a guy and you're watching this program and you like the mixed drinks that we make, but your wife or your girlfriend thinks that I'm a dumbass and doesn't don't mix good drinks. The dumbasses are over here, and here is a good mixed drink for um, your wife. You want to start with um, a glass of ice. We've already covered that ground. The next thing that you want to add is some vodka. Um, the brand is unimportant. You need about um, an ounce and a half of vodka. Now, you'll notice that we have here an unmarked flask. The reason that we use this is because we don't want to endorse... We've already gone over this ground. There's no product endorsements on this program because we don't care about anybody else's shit except our own. Okay. So you just want to fill the rest of this pint glass with cranberry juice. And then hand this to uh, your favorite wife, female favorite companion. Wife. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, your your um, so camera operating loved one. What's that word again? Potable? Potable. Yeah. Oh, that's right, because you're French. My oil. French Montanans. Oh, you You do? It's not from the dumbass corner. It's it's, oh. it's out in dim light. Oh, my gosh. She knows what the seven-year itch is. Is she going to come in here and talk to us yeah. in, in normal camera lighting, she's, or she's do chewing, I have to go in she's there? She's chewing on dumbass Ooh, I saw a right leg. Now. There's a leg. I saw, oh, my heavenly God, there's a creature out there. 
Next. Come on down. You're the next contestant on what the fuck is a seven year itch. Really? Yeah, yeah. So do you actually know? It's about time you get bored with whoever you're with, and so then you go wandering off into two new territories. <laughs> oh my goodness! So, now wait a second, this brings a whole different character to this program, doesn't it? I uh, See, I thought the seven year itch was a positive thing, like, you know, we got an itch to get a new show going on. But instead, it's about, like, leaving your loved one. And fuck that, I mean, I've gotten married! Did I mention I got married? Um, I guess that uh, this means we're married, so um, by the power vested in me by the um, ridiculousness of my own hubris, I pronounce us husband and wife. You may miss me. <laughs> Bravo! Let me, let me ask you all, while I got this thing. Um, sure. So, you know, marriage, is, is it overrated? Ask us, good thing you didn't ask us at the seven year itch point. <laughs> yeah, we're through that, thank God. That's true. Oh, the seven year itch, really? I mean, it's a. Did you actually physically get an itch or. Well, Bart got a rash, but. A rash. I don't this... think that's normal. So, you know. Jay and Day haven't been together long enough to know of the seven-year itch, but Christy and I have. And let me tell you, frankly, it's hell. This married life, she's always got to be watching these damn true crime television. Oh my god, you've got to see this one. You've got to see this. While she's busy grading her papers and doing her schoolwork and stuff because she's a teacher and she's got to work like hell, making it impossible oh, for me to Mark, think, get in here. much less write the novel that I know I have inside me. Yes, married life is hell, but... And occasionally, we do get out to do uh, something fun. So where are we? We're in Waveland, Mississippi. Mississippi. Yes, but but the, the Gulf Coast. The Gulf Coast here. Now the thing is, you got to be satisfied with you know, ankle deep ocean water. But we don't use the sandbar. Woo! Woo! The sandbar. You may be saying, you know, hey, this is lame, man, but let me tell you, if you get on a raft and you blow it up and you close your eyes, let me tell you, you could pretend. Hey, look, I know you all masturbate, only this is family fun, the beach. I mean, it's... It's almost worth it. About to pass out, but a few more breaths. Woo! It's a prom night all over again. Blow, baby, blow! What do you got there? The Phantom Menace! I wanted to get some cheapy. But I had to pay five bucks for this deluxe. Jeez, model, that's a little embarrassing. And it took out a left lung, blowing it up. Life skips the lemons, you make lemonade. It may only be a quarter inch deep, but when I've got my eyes closed, I'm Tom Hanks and Castaway, dude. Woo! One of the things that I uh, found in that file cabinet was this. You have two different documents. They, have, they look very similar. This was the Collins Living Learning Center, Indiana University. It's a different world orientation handbook for 1992 and 93. This is the unofficial <laughs> orientation handbook, which we and I produced in 1992-93. We didn't um, put our names on this. All we, we were tracked down and we kind of got in trouble. This kind of was a, an effort on our part to, um, to let people know what it was like to deal with the university system. This has a lot of text on it, as you can see. Feel free to pursue your every interest, no matter how esoteric or base. Your parameters should not be constrained by the dictates of cops, professors, and RAs. Whether or not you achieve your potential during your college years and afterward depends largely on your own self-assurance and autonomous creativity. I'm giving myself goosebumps for fuck's sake. This is the kind of stuff that I used to write. You want to hear something that I've written recently? Here is a, a glossy magazine, real thick magazine, nice glossy paper, and on the very cover, 
On the internet, nobody knows you're in Nebraska. It's a story I wrote on page 128. That guy looks kind of like you. Yeah, he does, except uh, he made more money than I did, ever. Do one thing, market like hell. That's Joe Ricketts' plan for Ameritrade, and it's working. I was paid $9,000 to write this article. Plus, I was given, given an all-expenses-paid trip to Nebraska, which everyone should covet. If you don't, it's only because you've been there. I spent all that time making $9,000 over, co- over the course of a couple of months, which was really nice, but writing this story that nobody remembers. I don't care about the fact that people don't remember that I wrote it, but people don't remember the article either just because it was meaningless. I mean, who gives a shit about Ameritrade? No offense to Ameritrade. Okay, uh, so read us a little excerpt there. Joe Ricketts wanted to be a doctor or a lawyer, but when he entered Creighton University in 1959, he quickly found that he had had the stomach for neither. At the urging of a friend, he took a course in economics and discovered Adam Smith. A light went off, recalls Ricketts. I knew that this was what turned me on. What what we really have here is an 11-page ad that I wrote for Ameritrade. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Um, I got paid well to do it, but do you think that it meant anything to anybody except for Ameritrade, who probably thereafter bought a bunch of ads in this magazine because they thought it was cool because they gave them... You know, such a blowjob, <laughs> thanks to me. But my pocketbook is stained by the semen of Ameritrade. While Jay's been doing all this impressive shit, you know what I've been doing? I've been doing what's really important in life. Drinking. Now that's meaningful. Try new things daily. Smoke marijuana or take LSD. Lie in bed thinking all day. Run naked through the car- courtyard. Explore your sexuality, hitchhike or hop a train, sleep under your bed, study yoga or the Bible or Nietzsche, grow something or draw something or write something. All of these things are acts of rebellion in our society because they are acts of will. Within that enormous arena of opportunity lies an infinite number of possibilities. Expand. Back then in the day, I used to believe that stuff. And you know what? I still do. But I haven't done much about it lately because I've been too busy writing about... Making money. Yeah, making money. I'm getting all middle class. I mean, look at my nipple, for God's sake. That's one middle class nipple you're looking at there. I thought that this would make life more pleasant or meaningful or secure or something, but you know what? It's just made things suck in a more complex and expensive way. (laughs) Oh, 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 almost. I got two. In lieu of success, in lieu of satisfaction, Mm -hmm. we'll drink. Exactly. This is a really pathetic kind of commentary on life in 21st century America, really. Yeah. What? The drinking? Something. What are you mixing there, Frau Heisel? I call it a Sorrow's Drowner. Sorrow's Drowner. It's a Sorrow's Drowner. It consists of peppermint, schnapps, yeah, that thing there, a little of this. Seagram 7. Seven yeah. years of sorrow and a very twisted bottle emblazoned with the initial B. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to mix it here with my finger. Oh, the, the finger technique. Oh, I bet you learned that from rocks. Come on, give us some fucking credit. Rocks taught me this phenomenal finger technique. <laughs> Stick it in, baby. Also how to squeeze this lemon. Oh, 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 oh. Juicy. Notice how it fizzes just a little. Juicy, there. fizzy, moist. It's like love in a glass. It makes everything better. It's a sorrow drowner. That's actually pretty good. You look less sorry already. <laughs> My sorrows are officially drowned. Word up. In the spirit of drowned sorrows, we're gonna go get wet. What you got there? I got my dog! Is 
So you know, it's never too late for a little baptism, so to speak. Now, I'm not a Christian, as anybody who's ever watched this program knows, but I am all for, you know, spiritual cleansing and, and uh, trans, uh, transformation, personal transformation of a sort. I'm spouting water because I've been under the water here in the river, the Clark Fork River, here in Missoula, Montana. What? There's a bowling ball in no the river! fucking way! <laughs> So much for the, the purity and essence of clean mountain water. Um, <laughs> what we've got here instead is a fucking bowling ball. And I've been bitching all this show long about how frustrated I feel about what I've been doing here professionally and how it hasn't matched up to um, my desires and expectations. And I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to make this TV show. I'm going to make this TV show. I'm going to make this TV show. The best TV show in America. I'm going to make this TV show, and you're going to follow along with me, hopefully. Okay, so uh, I guess we're getting toward the end of this program. And you you know, I mentioned earlier that this drink that we're making, the Rowdy Rectum, was it? It has a dollop of oyster sauce in the bottom. And as you can see, I'm down to it. So I'm going to have a little of that. Better s swirl it around at this point so that you mm. make sure you get Oyster it. Oyster mm. foodie. Uh. Wow. <laughs> you know, it surprises me that, the, you know, in Eastern cooking, uh, Chinese cooking recipe books, you never see this drink recipe. And I don't understand that. Well, may your balls be moist and your um, your fingers uh, muddy until next week or next time or next something. Have a good day. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm very scared. May I okay. get out we're, get, we're getting a lighted flaming part here. Go, go. Tossing <laughs> off. <laughs> oh, damn it. I'll make sure I have to go next time. Well, yeah. Oh, well. It happens, you know, when you're trying to light your farts and you're trying to get it on video. You know, the, the things happen, and this happened. Man. So, um, what the hell? I mean, what the hell happened with this car? Apparently somebody decided it would be a good place to put trash. So, uh, but what do you make of this? Ah! It looks fresh, though. So there you have it, the burned out wreck of a car full of garbage.